Um, but before we, we jump into the dura, let's just stop for a moment to take a quick look at the middle meningeal artery um, as it's clinically important. Uh, at the carotid bifurcation, the external carotid comes up parallel to the internal carotid and it, it terminates into two branches. The first is the superficial temporal artery, which runs laterally up the uh, side of the skull with the temporalis muscle. It's a great uh, uh, target for bypass, um, as well as the internal maxillary artery, which is running in this direction uh, towards the uh, infratemporal integral palatine fossae. Um, and the internal maxillary artery gives off the middle meningeal artery in most cases. And then the MMA then enters the skull through the foramen spinosa. And here we can see, again, from our perspective that we should be comfortable with now, here's the foramen spinosum, here's the middle, menin middle meningeal artery entering. And the middle meningeal artery um, tethers the dura of the temporal lobe down to the floor of the middle fossa. So if you, if you wanted to move that dura, you have to, one of the things you have to do is, is ligate this artery. So it comes up, and again, here's our GSPN going over the carotid. We can see the carotid here as it's coming out of the carotid canal. This has been drilled out so you can see it. Um, it would naturally come out a little bit more medial, and then the carotid's coming up underneath uh, here, entering the cavernous sinus, and we can see. As a quick mention, this is the distal dural ring. So you can see very clearly how it comes up. This is the proximal dural ring. So right here is C5. So it's extra cavernous, extra dural, then it's coming up and in, it's very short. Um, this is the clinoid space where the anterior clinoid would have been. And this is the carotid entering the dura through the distal dural ring right here. And we can see it's going right underneath second nerve as it's going into the optic canal. And then again, third nerve coming off the brainstem, that's its origin. This is its entire intradural course. Um, don't forget that, well, we would normally down here see the, the SCA and the PCA, uh, which have been cut. This is the basilar artery. So we have third nerve coming in, going all the way on top of that posterior clinoid process into the oculomotor triangle, down into the cavernous sinus. Fourth nerve would be in here with the free edge of the tentorium, which is also wrapping around the brainstem. So back to the middle meningeal artery, is, which is clinically important because it is the most common site of epidural hematomas. So very briefly on the left, uh, we have an axial non-contrast CT that shows a large uh, right biconvex hyperdensity consistent with an epidural hematoma. And as we can see, it's causing mass effect here. And that mass effect is also causing, we see, is causing midline shift. And we can see the midline shift because as we can identify the fox right here, we can see it's not uh, in the midline. It's being displaced uh, uh, to the contralateral side. So in general, um, epidurals look like lemons. They are extradural. Um, and they are emergent in part because they can cause uncle herniation. And I'm sure in your textbooks, you've, you've learned a lot about different herniation syndromes uh, in the brain, but it's much easier when you take a look at what that actually means. So where's the uncus? Uh, the uncus is the medial part of the temporal lobe. It's the most medial part. And when it comes down, uh, because of swelling or being pushed or mass effect, it comes down and it's pushing on the third nerve. And that is why you see a blown pupil. So it comes down and pushes on the third nerve. And this of itself is not necessarily life-threatening, but what is life-threatening is uh, if untreated, the uncus can also compress the midbrain, uh, causing respiratory arrest and death. So um, you can see here, this is superior, right? Here's our midbrain going up. There's the medial portion of the temporal lobe. And again, here's the origin of third nerve going straight on top of uh, the posterior clinoid. This is the free edge of the tentorium wrapping around. So we'd expect to see fourth nerve running with this. And this is coming over the posterior clinoid and exiting the dura. So uh, a couple clinical correlations here. One is uncle herniation. The other is the middle meningeal artery. Uh, most common site of epidural hematomas. Hey everyone.
everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.